All right, it's time to face the best deck of all time. Hello, my name is Shadow Glade, and welcome to KCC Season 4, Week 6. Week 5 is skipped due to scheduling complications. A common theme this season, if you check out Chewin CB's channel. And as you can see, we are fighting Coach Nick and the Milwaukee Monarchs. Did not mean to say, as you see. But now, as you see... It's Pendulum Day, baby. We got the Burning Abyss, a full Metal Foes package to give everything Electromite, plus Messiah to be a mini Macrocosmos for spells and traps. That was a big issue for us. We were Star Cole, in my opinion, since we have Kaiju Slumber, Ivy Mask Arena, and Scale Drain, which is not a 3 and will not be a 3 next season. Spoilers, but I don't care. Now then, how do we want to deal with this? Simple. First things first, the Live Twins. Now, something actually that's new in this build in particular is the main deck of Unending Nightmare, as besides Burning Abyss, every single deck has... Every single one of its decks are Pendulum decks, and Unending Nightmare kind of ends them. So yeah, this thing's going to be a killer. Other than that, we have cards dedicated to killing pendulums. Exile of the Wicked for the Fiends and Burning Abyss. It's not a fiend at all! Prohibition because Electromite's a pain. System Down for the Dynamists. Diamond Dust for also Dynamist. I'm really investing in Dynamist, I see. And Ice Dragon's Prison, which kills Burning Abyss monsters, but doesn't really do anything against pendulums, so it's only gonna be side decks. Next up, Trains. Pendulums can do a lot, but they uh, don't have much protection against OTKs, aside from Skill Drain, of course. Once again, Triple N Unending Nightmare in the main deck for non Burning Abyss matchups. In the side deck, Free Skull Meister for Burning Abyss, Exile of the Wicked, and basically everything else except for non Fusion Area, meant to deal with the Metal Foes matchup. Alex Pacific, but I know. And finally, the Speed Voids. Nothing too special here. Again, Triple Unending Nightmare. A mini kaiju package in the side deck. We already have three Gamma Seal mains. System down only affects the opponents. I'm really glad for that. Three Diamond Dust, three Non Fusion Area, and two Duplicate. Now then, let's get into the duels. So, one thing I should probably mention is that sadly, between the actual duels and the recording of this video, the first game got corrupted, so we can't show it. Just know I opened double. Unending Nightmare against Burning Abyss, which as you can see, he is playing against us. Anyway, we won the first game, so we opt to go first. Opening Tor got up, special summoning a nice graphs, making Dante, attaching graph. Have you seen this before? Only milling one on purpose. He makes Hyper Mask Arena, summons C or summons Dante back, getting Seer back. Summoning Beatrice and passing. Sending the Karma Cut, which is fine. We have a Sunny Snitch, and get used to seeing Sunny Snitch in this game. He's gonna try Karma Cutting, but fails to realize that we can just do it again. We summon Lilithreet, special case to kill Frost. And he's trying to Beatrice us, but we will not let him do that. We are going to Chalice him, and he is just click yes turbo. Now Trispana could be a problem for us, and he does get the right Gekki Break. We can deal with that. He's going to Aelic us. However, we're just going to summon back Frost to get stuff in the rotation. We summon Lilla, which is fine. We are going to summon Kids to kill Frost. And he is going to summon back Alec. We'll gain a 200 deal to him. He's going to Triss Bana our back row. Unfortunate, so we'll just set one and pass, hoping he makes Zeroboros. He goes straight to battle phase here. And I don't know how Lilla works. I keep thinking it's a battle trick, but I realize it's not that. We draw out the Cyclone off the top, which is fine. So we're just going to pull up the combo again, since we already have one in the graveyard. So we're going to get our free draw off of Keys of Kill, Slim and Trouble Sunny, and beat over Trisbana. Perfectly good so far. Now, uh, Farfa could be annoying, but we should be able to deal with that. Sure enough, he's going to summon Grab and Farfa, make Cherubini, summoning Skarn from deck. Sending Libic, I forget what that thing does. Summoning Barbar, and he summons Zeroboros. Now... He's going to banish a bunch, but I'm going to Truth Bane him here. So we'll still take the 900, but he's going to be down a very important monster. He's going to search for Torigon in the end phase, and we are going to draw one off of Kisa Kill Frost. From there, we're going to call the Cyclone here. The deck can't really finish the buff. 
he will get rid of our blue link, unfortunately, which is unfortunate as we kind of wanted that to OTK, but we still have enough for our game. Oh, wait, no, he looks on 500. Oh, wait, he left. We left entrance here. That, I forgot that was game one. Let's go just we take the first match and go on to game two. For our second match, thankfully, no more files got corrupted, and we are free to just show off the Metal Fells matchup. And I'd say we've opened pretty well, all side. Well, we got our openers, we got our rank 10. He has his skills up, but I'll stop the pendulum summon since he didn't draw anything. We're gonna summon Ruffian Rail Car since we didn't really have the damage to OTK. Although I later learned some rulings that I could have OTK'd here, not knowing Moonlight Show was still in the effect. And this is where I learned another fun fact. Did you know Unending Nightmares not once per turn? I didn't. So I am free to just kill his entire scales. I love this thing. We're gonna add Stary Crane in the meantime, and we are going to catch a slip for him to get rid of his fusions. Now he will get to revive a Staling here, but that is fine by me. We special summon Stary Crane here. We get Ruffy Real Card back just because we are intent to goose off Max here, but oh well. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave it here, deal a metric chunk, hopping his back row and slamming our face into him as hard as we humanly can. And from here, there are top decks that save him, but Moonlit Chill's not one of them. He suicides for game. Game two, and I feel bad. We open both Kaijus. Unfortunately, not much more we can do from that, so we just gotta hope he can't OTK us, which Turtle Pose could technically do. He's going to set up his scales here, activate Stead Lead, blow up his stuff, get Paramount Pulse Fusion, activate it immediately, Summon Miss William and just walk right over our railroad stampede. That is fine by me. We can live with that. We opt us urgent schedule here, summoning Derek Crane and Ruffian Railcar. Normal summoning that Express Knight and actually making the BLS link. Only to realize we lose our battle phase due to urgent schedule. And he draws the Dark Hole, but only now does he realize the BLS link is bonkers. He makes Electromite, but we are going to Ghost Mortar and Moonlit Chill, stopping him from doing some great things. So he opts to actually kill itself with Silver, getting Paramount's Fusion, activating Melipo's counter to special summon something from the deck, banishing our Not Express Knight, and passing. Now we're going to Gamma Steal him, summoning our own Kaiju, and he's going to activate counter from the graveyard to get some stuff back, but it's not going to stop us from gaining 1500 attack to kill him next turn. Dealing 3300, and there are top decks that are getting out of the situation, and he drew pretty good. He's going to draw Balth Flame, right, make Link Spider, do nothing, and concede. And now we would go to game three here, but he surrendered. So, we take the weak baby. 6 0. Oh, pretty good. Should help us stay in the playoff race as long as we can. But our next opponent is much stronger than this. See you guys next week.